Hello, my friends at YouTube. I'm Gene Della Sala, president of Audioholics, and today we have Hugo Rivera, vice president of marketing. Gene, how are you, man? Awesome as always, my friend. Thanks for asking. Same here. Same here. I'll tell you what, man. It's a wild, wild west out there. Okay. Uh oh. People are setting up their home theaters, and there are just, as you have seen, so many mistakes that they make. Sometimes they get good equipment. Yeah. But. It's like, you know what? It doesn't matter. It's all messed up. So let's talk about those common mistakes today. It's a democracy without a constitution. <laughs> it really is. There's no bylaws. Just do whatever. <laughs> Put anything you want anywhere. Anything goes. Wish for the best. <laughs> anything goes. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think it's a good idea to do a video on the common mistakes that people make when setting up a home theater. Mm -hmm. So I think we could cover some of these points. Yeah, I think we can start with point number one, which as you know, is probably bad product uh, selection, you know? That's a big one. That's a big Billy Baru. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I tell you, man, I get, it's not only the emails I get, but when I go to my neighbor's houses, family member houses, they'll go and buy a really nice thousand dollar AV receiver and they'll mate it with cube speakers. Right. The little Bose cubes, you know, the ones that you go to the Best Buy and they're all stuck around you. They sound good when you're like three feet away. Which but they sell you as the greatest thing ever, by the way. Not a, not in the greatest breakthrough in 20 years, though. But yes, <laughs> the like greatest thing ever. That's another topic. <laughs> but yeah, you know, you, you get these nice receivers and you get a big room, a big theater room. They're putting these little tiny cubes in. Or what worse, they're putting an all-in ceiling surround system. Oh, God. I call those fancy intercoms. Those are bad. Yeah, for real. That's exactly Seriously, they put like. the front three speakers in the ceiling mm -hmm. and the rear two speakers in the ceiling, done. And then they'll throw the subwoofer in a cabinet. Bad elevator music right there. Yeah. That's exactly the voice of God talking. all around you. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah, no so good. So bad, bad speaker selection is, is, is a big one, okay? Mm -hmm. Not getting the right equipment for the room or for the listening conditions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, yeah. that's yeah. common. Yeah, and you know, sometimes you can go ahead and have, like we, we talked in other videos, you know, you select p half of your equipment is well selected and it's really high end, and then the other half, it, it doesn't support what you just selected at the beginning. Or you know? they pray to their cables. Right. They'll, they'll stick too much of their budget into the cables. It's a religion. <laughs> That's true, too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Gene, trust, well, you know how it is. I mean, some people out there that are producing these fancy cables, they really go out and bat for these. Hell yeah. They really drink their own Kool-Aid. There's a lot of Kool-Aid out there. There's a lot of Kool-Aid. You know, the next topic would be bad positioning of your, of mm -hmm. your speakers. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, I've been to people's houses where they have the center channel on the floor. Yeah, that's bad. Or they put one center channel on the floor, then another ch center channel on the ceiling playing the same signal. Mm -hmm. that, well, let's talk about acoustical interference. For okay. real. Unless you have a discrete signal going from the center channel with the low and the center channel for the high, like in Oro 3D, don't do two center channels. That's ghetto. Well, then you also have the Atmos speaker by the fish tank. Oh, yeah. You know, with the Atmos up for our speaker, <laughs> you can place it anywhere. Anywhere. They, they have very specific guidelines on where to put the discrete speakers, but when you buy the Atmos module, it's magic. Put it anywhere you want. Yep. It has some Roswell IP. The we sound, can't talk about the specs. The sound wave will actually follow you and it'll fall right into your speaker. <laughs> it's, it, it's a heat-seeking right sound wave. Here. A heat-seeking yeah. sound wave. It really yeah, is. yeah, that's that's a problem. Yeah. And then I've also been to some of my, uh, I'd say let's say the in-laws' house. <laughs> yeah. They took. I set them up with a great 5.1 system. I put all the speakers in the right positions. I come back a couple of months later. All five speakers are on the front wall unit. Nice. And the center <laughs> channel's behind a picture. <laughs> oh, that's great. You know, put all your speakers in the front of the room and just wish that you'll get surround sound. And then that brings us to the next topic is blocking your, your direct path of sound from your speakers to the listeners. It must be the Roswell IP. It must be everywhere. <laughs> Dude, I, I'm telling you, I go to people's houses. They have three or $4,000 tower speakers. They got a couch slap right next to the speaker covering the mid-range and part of the tweeter. And they're like, I wonder why I can't get a good phantom image. I wonder why, you know, the sound doesn't sound balanced. It's a hard guess. It's, it's a really hard, hard guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you don't want to block the path between yeah. the speaker and the listener. It's Think of it as a flashlight, you know, mm -hmm. it's a beam of light. The sound goes from the speaker to the listener. And of course you got reflections and stuff, but you want to maintain the direct sound. Yeah, exactly. 
exactly. You don't want to put a cover, you know. So bad positioning, that's the next myth. Or mm -hmm. I, I should say that's the next mistake mm -hmm. made in home theater setup. Mm -hmm. You know, another thing that we, we find is um, not calibrating. You know, yeah. I've, been, I've been, again, just going to neighbors' houses. I learned so much going to my neighbors. It's good I, research. I, I love them. I love them. <laughs> I've been to so many people's homes where they have a 5.1 setup and the surround speakers aren't even working. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> you do the test tones and they're out. They, 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 the, the cable came out in the back of the receiver because they used the little jumpers and they fall off if you sneeze. Or they just didn't set the channel configurations when they did the receiver setup. Mm -hmm. That's another thing. Most people, uh, and you know, in these setups, they don't even set the the delays, the speaker delays. They don't set True. the channel trims. They just leave it on the factor default. No base management. Mm -hmm. None. So that's a huge thing right there. Not getting the base management right is critical. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't, if, especially if you're using a small pair of speakers with a sub, you need to cross those speakers over like 80 hertz. You need to get the subwoofer playing the right say no. If you have multiple subs, I mean, if you even get that far, you need to make sure that they're properly set up. I mean, the bass is a huge part of the audio experience. You oh, know. you know, Harmon and Dr. Floyd Tools research, over 30% of the experience in music is good bass. So if you mess up the bass, you just kill, you know, 30%, 30%. Of, the, of the experience, yeah. That's significant. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> get, get your stuff together, people. <laughs> you know, the other one is uh, cabling, you know. Uh, I'm not talking about the exotic stuff. I'm talking about how many how many people have you seen? They have the, like the Bright House boxes or the Verizon FiOS, and they're using composite video plugged into their HD TVs. I got high definition. I've got 4K. No, you got 480i. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got 480i upscaled to 4K, and it looks pretty bad. Yeah, exactly. Don't do that. Use HDMI. There's nothing wrong with HDMI as long as you make the connection good. HDMI is the only cable you can use now to get the high def audio and high def video down one cable. Mm -hmm. Even if you have HDMI and then you're using Toslink to your receiver, you're not gonna get Dolby True HD, you're not gonna get Atmos, you're not gonna get DTS HD or DTS X if you don't use HDMI. HDMI is not as evil as a lot of people have made it out to be. True. True. Unfortunately, it's not the sturdiest connector, but it's the only approved cable that we can get all of our high def sources off of. Yes, of course. Some of the cable religions out there will defer with us, but well, they'll tell you that the you know you have you to know. get the battery put on the cable to get yes. better signal. When yeah. HDMI either works or it doesn't, there's no in between. Exactly. <laughs> a three dollar cable for a short length will probably work just as good as a three hundred dollar cable. You mm -hmm. know, and price is not always a factor when it comes to cables. That's absolutely right. Unless you want the cosmetics. Mm -hmm. Absolutely right. Cool, Gene. I think uh, that about covers that, unless you can think of something else. Well, you forgot room acoustics. Ah, room you know? acoustics. Holy cow, yes. If you ever look at the trade show magazines, I love when they show you these really exotic European speakers. They look beautiful, okay? The rack looks beautiful. The audio equipment looks beautiful. But then they go put it in a room that's got hardwood floors, glass walls, vaulted ceilings, and that's their system. You know, I, it was funny, like we watched, uh, you remember the show Daredevil that's on Netflix? Uh -huh, uh -huh. They have that guy, the bad guy, I forgot his name now, but he's the bald guy, he looks like Mr. Clean. <laughs> Anyways, um, Kingpin, uh -huh. okay? He's standing there, and this is like multiple scenes. He's got these BMW Nautilus 801s, that are like twenty or $30,000 speakers, and they're just sitting right by a glass wall and they're kind of pointed in a random direction. And you know that that's just there for aesthetics. But there are people that will set up a system like that and think they've reached nirvana. Absolutely. It's incredible, but room acoustics is huge. I mean, it is. And you don't need to turn your room into an anechoic chamber. No. But we, you need to do some, some passive, some natural passive treatments, like a throw rug at your first reflection point would make a huge, huge difference. Huge difference, huge. I mean, I've seen that myself, Gene, doing the home renovation at home. Throw the rug, man, that cancels so much echo. Oh, you know? yeah, it's because incredible. you don't allow those standing waves, the high frequency standing waves to bounce around and Absolutely. just distort the sound. Huge. The, be the more you can get the direct sound to you without kind of scattering everything around, the better. The only exception somewhat is the early reflections on the side walls. You want to pr preserve a lot of that, especially mm -hmm. if you've got very good speakers with very wide beneficial. dispersion. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you need to address the room. Before Absolutely. you start spending money on cables and and uh, buying into the cable religion, um, 
get your room right. <laughs> yes. In fact, I'll go ahead and I'll link our room acoustics video right here so that people can go ahead and take a look at it because I think it is that important. And just little changes like, like the rug, that'll make a huge difference. We're not talking about big, expensive, you know, absorption things or anything like that. You right, know? right. So. And then, you know, I have a bonus for you. I have a bonus. It's the upgrade bug. You know, people always yes. think newer is better, and you, we just did a video on the trends in AV receivers. Don't just think the next model coming out from your favorite company is going to be better than its predecessor. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, you could be going backwards because as they start stamping more technology into their products, you know, they're cutting costs elsewhere. So look at what you buy before you leap. Absolutely. And, you know, do you really need to be bouncing sound all around your room, or are you happy with your system now with just solid 5.1 or 7.1? Add that second sub before you start upgrading receivers and getting into all these new formats. You're much better off adopting a new format correctly than doing a half-assed attempt. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's not going to be good in any level when you do that. So again, you know, think about the upgrade before you do the upgrade and see if it makes sense. Exactly. Awesome. Anything else, Gene? I think we covered the bases here. Let us know what your um, common mistake that you find when people are setting up home theaters, even if you set up your own home theater and you made a mistake that you kind of live to regret and you've changed or you want to redeem yourself, your redemption's right below, so just give us your comments. <laughs> That's true. We've all made mistakes, so uh, don't be afraid, okay? Uh, I remember the days when, when you had the equalizers. Oh, the V-curves. <laughs> yeah, the V-curves. Yeah. <laughs> I Spider played around yeah. a lot with those. Oh yeah. Oh uh, yeah. That's that's my thing right there. That was awesome. Back in the day, I thought I was a man. I'm like, oh, I think I really know how to equalize this. Stuff. Turn up 63 hertz. Turn up 16 kilohertz, and you you're good to go. <laughs> you're golden. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so with that said, people, just comment below and also click like on this video and uh, let us know what you think. Share it with your friends and also feel free to subscribe to our channel so you keep getting videos like this on a weekly basis. Thanks for being here and until next time, keep, keep listening. listening.